The first thing that was uh, kind of relevant at the moment over the past few days is Hogwarts Legacy, which has come out. And uh, wow, quite a yeah. reaction online. Um, apparently, it's it's really this like ideological purity test. Now, if you play okay. it, then you are not one of the you're not one of the inner cult circle anymore. You know, you're not pure enough. And uh, how the hell did it come to this? Why this game? Why is <laughs> it, this so important? I don't know why they picked this for their battle. I really don't because like with everything going on with EA, with Blizzard, even with Riot Games, all that kind of stuff, it's kind of like crickets. But then. Harry Potter, leg or Hogwarts Legacy, J.K. Rowling, bad. <laughs> Don't play, or you're you're a terrible person if you play this. And it has just gotten to insane levels. People, streamers, are scared of their own viewers to even play the game. But I think those streamers, they kind of did it to themselves because they they catered to the mob, they pandered to the mob, and now they're seeing this game that is just breaking records on Twitch. People love it, and and they want to play. They're even some of them are even admitting like, oh, they want to play, but they don't want to deal with the headache of it with their followers turning on them and stuff. It's like, well, maybe if you didn't burn bridges with the based people and <laughs> yeah, didn't yeah. pander to all the the crazies, then you wouldn't be in this situation right now. But it's all about control because it's like they will disown you cancel you just based off who you follow on social media and now we're at the point to where you can't even play a game without them coming after you it's just insanity the whole thing's like a little microcosm of like the whole situation with jk rowling in the first place because she's like mm -hmm. she's like a big raging lefty in yes. the first place it's but it's just like on this one issue she deviates from them and damn there is nothing they hate more than one of their own that steps mm -hmm. out of line. And that's exactly what she's done. And man, she has just become like the antichrist for so many of them. Uh, yeah. And it's, yeah, in a way, it's like, well, you've cultivated these people. You've attracted them as yep. your audience. You knew what they were and you knew what they would do to anyone who steps out of line. You know, I don't have that much sympathy for you, ultimately. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> they no, because they're out there demanding things, and this these are these are uh, individuals who want to be identified a certain way as mm -hmm. individuals. Yet they get into this Marxist cultish group yep. think that they want people to go to through struggle sessions. Contrast this with what happened to Gina, who's not as powerful as J.K. Rowling, but mm -hmm. these are two symbols of Hollywood. These are the strong, powerful female. J.K. Rowling being the most powerful, being the George Lucas of women, you know, yeah. like, uh, <laughs> and, and making this insanely popular thing. Uh, and you, as you said, it, she disagrees with like not even one percent. It's like point one yeah. percent of all of the things. And now she just not even be canceled. She needs to be ended. So you look at you contrast this with Gina. Right. And if Disney had done nothing and not fired Gina, it would have gone away. You now see how cowardly and stupid they were because you know, Warner Brothers and whoever makes uh, Hogwarts Legacy and Universal, they're not backing down. They're making too mm -hmm. much money. Yep. I was just at Orlando. I saw that place is packed. The Hagrid ride has like an average of two to three to four hour line for that ride. Wow. That, like all, I went to Ollivander's and it was freaking packed like yeah. you couldn't even walk in there you couldn't even walk around in there and the same goes for la and by the way she still sells a hell of a lot of books and now she's got the best-selling game she's swimming in money right now this yeah. is a massive failure and that's what they're pissed about they just saw they just saw how little power they mm -hmm. have and how much yeah. we gave them yep to be super clear it's uh the way that they outlined the terms of this fight that they've created out of nothing is that they were the loss conditions for them were the success of the game so they did it to themselves nobody mm. said that that was the case until they did <laughs> they're like yeah. and have you seen those tweets where they're like oh my god the success of this game means that we like that's it like look how horrible the world is like no you've that's just people playing fucking video games shut up mm -hmm. <laughs> why do well, I, I you think... define that as your loss yeah, I mean, it's like you've got obviously the extreme of um, people who buy it and they've got no intention of even playing it. They just yeah. want it to be a success <laughs> because it's like a giant fuck you to all these idiots. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm caught here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm like, there you go. <laughs> uh, and then you've just got people in the middle who are like, yeah, I just want to have fun and play a game that, that I enjoy. Like, what's so bad about that? And it doesn't make me an evil person. And 
Yeah, man, it just it throws up all kinds of discussions, I suppose, about like do you, how can you separate the art from the artist? And mm -hmm. I guess in J.K. Rowling's case, it seems to be utterly impossible for some people. Right. Um, and yeah, it's weird the number of people that you still see even now who are posting up things on social media saying like, oh, you know, Harry Potter was my entire life and you've ruined it now and I've burned all my books. And I think, well, one, you bought them in the first place, so she don't give a fuck. She's yeah. made her money out of you already. Uh, and two, like, damn, imagine basing your whole life around Harry Potter. That's fucking sad as it is. Jesus. Well, it only goes to show that this was the hill that many chose to die on. Mm -hmm. Like, mm. because you have, like, these things which are in the moment, and then they all became ideological purity tests. This is the thing yep. that you have to believe yeah. in. But of course it changes uh, from time. Like sometime mm -hmm. it is like, you have to say a cap. You have to put that in your profile. You have to have your Twitter pronouns. Oh, now you need the Ukrainian yep. flag. And then right now in this time frame, this, this month right here, it is this game. Because yep. now JK Rowling, who is a strong independent woman, so someone who really should be kind of like on their side of things but she dares to go against the narrative and that makes her worse than you know that that dude during that uh trife in germany back in the 40s he's worse than him right now <laughs> mm -hmm. and so yeah. she must be destroyed and this is now the yeah. ideological purity test next month is going to be something else yes, anyway, exactly. so right now if you're Mark Hamill and you just tweet something wrong, they're going to come for everyone who fails the ideological purity test. And it's Melanie funny because I've got no sympathy for Mark Hamill either. Right. No, he I. courted these people mm -hmm. for like the past five years. Well, yeah. so, well, that's, uh, exactly. And that's the point that uh, you made, Melanie, that uh, these Twitch streamers that decided to go with yep. the exact kind of people that will shoot you for any little yes. thing the moment you are no longer in line. Why the heck would you cater to those people? Mm -hmm. And if you do, like, and really, you try, then you choose to to walk on eggshells, and then, yeah, that's what you choose. Yeah, well, this when is did... just. Oh, sorry. I was just going to ask, like, when did gaming become like this? Because it, it used to be it's... like a I know. subculture that was kind of edgy and didn't yeah. give a shit, and it was just like uh, about you know artistic freedom of expression mm -hmm. and doing what what was interesting and cool and like it was irreverent and now it's become well it's become this it's just it got hijacked a cog in the machine Corporate, yeah. in mind, corporatism a vast chunk of gamers don't even know this has happened exactly and the thing is is they're just loud and we've learned that with hogwarts legacy is that uh, the gaming industry has been, all of a sudden, they just took over all of these crazies, all this crazy ideology and stuff has taken over the gaming industry just like it's plagued everything else. But they think they're catering to the majority and what they're finding now, just even with Hogwarts Legacy as a perfect example, is they're not the majority at all. Um, I, I think what how this initially got to this point was that Pe gaming was always like more edgy and more okay you know your hardcores versus your casuals and all that well then people started saying why are you gatekeeping us why are you gatekeeping us casuals we want to play too and it, and then it was like okay let's let more people in let's let's be more welcoming and invite them well then they walked in and then took over and then it's like uh, wanting to put all of these the all of this message into everything wanting to fill all these diversity quotas, we're needing this, that, and the others, this checklist, um, making games for this most, like, uh, bottom of the barrel people who aren't really gamers, but who wanted in on the hobby because it's like, oh, it's fun, it's profitable, they want in on it. Um, and so we've seen, even <clears throat> beyond just the message, we're seeing games that are baby down severely in general uh people are just wanting to watch just a story on a screen and uh gameplay is taking a back seat because the message is taking the front seat and now people are gamers are getting sick of it gamers are being a lot more bold now uh and i think with what's going on with hogwarts legacy and its success is going to help turn the tides and even with elden ring last year here's a game that put most of its focus on gameplay giving gamers actual gamers not just the people who just only want to watch a pretty story actual gamers got a real video game with elden ring uh, 
and that really made waves. And then now with Hogwarts Legacy here, people are realizing, hey, well, maybe we shouldn't be pandering to this other crowd. And correct me if I'm wrong, but like the actual content of the game isn't in any way like transphobic or anything like that. It's like no. I mean, there's the even trans right? characters in it. Like, yeah, so it's like it, it's giving them all that they want, but because it's like associated with a person they don't like, that's that's it for yeah. them. That's and, never been transphobic, by the way. Let's exactly. Just keep pointing that out. <laughs> She's and never been transphobic. She never said anything actually transphobic. She's just like, oh, okay, keep keep wieners out of female restrooms. That sounds perfectly reasonable to me. <laughs> but well, basically, I, I'm what a she said too, apparently. So yeah. <laughs> what, what she said was the biological equip uh, equivalent of uh, two plus two equals four. Yes. Well, she, she, the, the, yes, they're trying to rewrite reality. Yeah. Like that's, that's what's going on right now. And that is part of a culture war, a, a legit culture war. Uh, it's part of what happened in China. Uh, and, it, you know, that's my next video is about that. Bill Maher talked about it recently, getting rid of the four olds. Um, and yeah, just, you know, up is down, black is white, good is evil. Uh, everything will be turned upside down because it won't matter, and it's all in a in a in a, in a move to to just make us all like little pod people. Uh, and they are they are engineering the culture now. Did they start it as a master plan? No, it was just it was very easy to do when you had a bunch of like minded people. Then corporatism gets involved. Then these investment firms with their ESG and their DEIs get involved, and here we are. And what you just said is the same things happening in storytelling. They are dumbing down, you know. Drinkers made great videos about it. They are dumbing down storytelling for the normies when we were all normies. We were all casuals when we started. Mm -hmm. We just liked the stories. They were good stories. So everything's getting watered down because there's too much right now. There's just yeah. everything is so and so there's not enough talent. And it's very easy for woke activists and middle management to come in and take over because the bankers don't pay attention and the creatives just want work. So it, yeah. that that's how we get here. And it's, and you know, also people were calling it out soon enough. Exactly. We, we just like let it happen because we were told, oh, you're mean, you're gatekeeping this and that. And so it's like, okay, let's be more welcoming. Well, then they just took over. And it's funny. I agree too with what you said is how a lot of us were normies. I was always more on like the casual gamer side. I wasn't even considered like super hardcore before, but now with how the way games are now, uh, or how gamers, gamers are now the people who waltzed in and they don't even want video games to be video games anymore. It's just like the casuals of old are the hardcore now <laughs> it's insane yeah well we can always test your cred who's the main character's name in halo <laughs> uh john 117 <laughs> <laughs> you know what that's good enough, that's good enough. <laughs> was it wasn't it the asian girl from the tv show oh yes yes it was that's the main character uh, the, the beloved tv show <laughs> the yeah like as a sign of just the hysteria <laughs> that's been around this game uh, there was actually a site created to track the Twitch streamers who dared to play this game, and they were added to a list, which you could then consult. <laughs> ah, that uh, is great! And it's, I yeah, nothing it. bad has I'm ever come from adding people onto lists uh, based on what they dare to do or what they are. So, um, <laughs> yeah, sure, that's nothing sinister about that. But fortunately, it's been shut down, apparently, yes. after yeah, like a couple has, of days. Oh, the guy fucking removed it because he was like, holy shit, I'm about to tank my whole life by that making this hilarious. thing. Yeah, I think he might have had a, maybe a sudden attack of common sense. But uh, it just shows you, happen. though, that the impetus was there to create it, and it oh, was yeah. getting a lot of traction as well. Uh, which again, wow! You just have to look at the mentality of the people who would support yeah. something like that. It's like exactly yeah. that's look exactly at Desper, right. Man. Because, they, uh, because they egg the each other on, and then they like they convince themselves it's apocalyptic. What's happening? Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're like trans people are gonna die if you play this game. Like what? <laughs> In what <laughs> universe? <laughs> Yeah. Meanwhile, like just any normal person is just like I just I just want to play a wizard game where I, I can yeah. like wouldn't, cast wouldn't spells. Wizard, be, damn it! Let fewer people are gonna die because they're all gonna be at home playing a game, so they're not right. gonna be outside doing it. Yeah, exactly. Keeping them safe. <laughs> I think it might might be actually safe. Well, see, that's lives. 
Look, my parents never bought the whole violent games make you violent. They were looking at right. me play them. They were like, but he's there just playing. <laughs> look, at, <laughs> look, at, look at little Molly down there. Such yeah. a sweet elder Wear, guy. Wearing his gas mask. Yeah. <laughs> Naturally. He's a perfectly normal boy. <laughs> it's funny that the one question I've never asked is like, is the game actually any good? <laughs> like, it is. Yeah, it's actually this. really good. It, it, I think it's great. Um, uh, and I, th I think that's one of the, the biggest reasons why it's uh, succeeding because obviously the whole uh, just wanting to get back at, at all the wokes and proving them wrong. Uh, yeah, out of buying it out of spite motivated a lot of people into buying it. But if it wasn't good, I don't think it would ultimately be as successful as it is right now. Uh, but it actually is a really good game so far from what I've that's played. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and is there a spell that allows you to turn people inside out? And if not, why not? I, I haven't I haven't gotten that spell yet. I guess we'll uh, see. <laughs> so I'm, the, that's what I'm holding. The out combat's for. great. I think the combat is probably uh the best part of the game. Um it, it feels almost like you're playing an instrument with all those spells and how they have cooldowns and stuff and rotating through them, uh, and your parries and all that. Uh it, it's like a rhythm. And if you mess things up a little bit, it's like, oh, oh, oh wait. <laughs> but it, it's great. Yeah. Voldemort would probably come up with a spell like that. I mean, like the closest is Sectum Sempra, which gashes you open. That was oh, yeah. Spell. Even I remember those ones. There you go. Isn't, isn't, isn't there one that can, like, remove all the bones from your body so you're just like a kind of jelly man? Yep. Whoa. Cool. <laughs> that was accidentally done, but yes. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> ah, the fun that could be had. See, see yeah, that's so You'll be fine. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that would draw me in. It's like, yeah, if you could just do ridiculous things to people, perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go.